This is our newly restored Augustin Avriol sewing machine, manufactured by Legat in France from around 1890 to 1894. The earliest reference I could find for this machine is that it was exhibited in the Paris exhibition of 1889. These are ideal for collectors because they're scarce enough to be classified as rare, but not so scarce that they never come up for sale. Tracking eBay and Pinterest sales suggests one or two are available per year. To thread, bring the thread over through this first pigtail, through this second one, up to the hole in the end of the take-up arm, down through this guide, and finally through the needle from left to right. This is your tension adjust, which works by varying the drag on the spool. And this is your stitch regulator. For the lower thread, place the bobbin in the shuttle and bring the thread up either from the top or the inside and through this slot in the side. There's a little finger right here. The th thread goes underneath that and then out through this hole. You adjust the tension with this screw. Now, in my case, this screw tightened all the way down and didn't give me quite enough tension to get the stitch I wanted. So I found that looping the thread once around this arm, which is what holds the bobbin in place, gave me just a little bit more tension and got a much better stitch. Clamp to the end of a table to provide clearance for the plunger. Every all sew as fast as any hand crank machine. Better still, they're designed to work with a rocker foot attached to the bottom of the plunger with a leather strap. This provides the hands-free convenience of a treadle. Mounting an Avriol on a display base not only makes for a more imposing presentation, it also provides enough clearance to sew anywhere without having it to hang off the end of a table. While the advantage to do treadle-like sewing without the weight, size, and expense of a treadle was a good selling point for these machines, it wasn't enough to overcome their shortcomings. Whether using the pump action or a rocker foot, the stop and go feel of using an Avriol is much more jarring than the very smooth motion of the hand crank machines it was competing against. Cosmetically, its open gearing gave it an old fashioned industrial look that had gone out of style by the 1890s. More seriously, its tiny bobbin held less than one half as much thread as the bobbins in many competing machines. Having to stop work twice as often to refill the bobbin was unattractive to prospective buyers. In the end, in spite of its unique design and capabilities, the Avriol was a failure. While Legat stopped production in 1894, Avriel kept his Paris shop open another three years, probably to sell off leftover inventory. There's no record for how many Avriels were made, but assuming their serial numbers are sequential, we may be able to make a guess. The serial number on this machine is 5,592, which hints that the production run may have been around 6,000. If anyone who has an Avriel could let me know what its serial number is in the comments section, we might be able to firm up this number. Next up, I'm working on a Wheeler and Wilson 9. I hope you'll come back to see how it turns out. Until then, thanks for watching.